Just some clear cut TS stock guides mounted on a Incra TS LS table saw fence. This is a follow up video on a better way to combine these two wonderful tools on your table saw. While I install them on a saw stop, this will work for any table saw with an Incra fence. This is WB Fine Woodworking with Don Bullock. Hi there and welcome to WB Fine Woodworking. I'm Don. I decided that I'd move inside specifically to my office and my edit bay where I edit my videos for this channel. In fact, right now on the screen is the edit of the video that you're watching. Later on, I'll tell you a little bit more about this edit bay when I answer some questions in this video about my editing. Speaking of videos, I received a lot of comments and questions on my Jessam Clear Cut TS stock guides and the install on my Incra fence. Since it was a real popular video and I had all these comments and questions, I thought I'd share them here and maybe clarify some of the things that were covered in that video. Peter T said, very informative and well-made video. One question, why didn't you make the fence thicker, either with wood or just buy another fence extrusion and stack them? It's $44 and the kit was $30. I guess the walnut is cheaper, but have you considered it? Well, Peter, I didn't consider making the fence thicker, although that was an option. I liked your idea of adding an extra extrusion onto the face of this fence but you have to remember mine was a fence made for me especially by Inca to fit my saw stop. That was before saw stops were popular. Most people didn't even know what a saw stop was back when I bought mine. So I would have had to have them make a, a, another custom extrusion and they were really backed up at the time. Some people were complaining they were waiting for the Inqua fences for months. As shown here, my Inqua fence extends well beyond the back of the saw stop. I asked the Inqua rep to make the fence that long for me. The problem arose because the top of the saw stop is deeper than most table saw tops. I'm showing here where I think a regular Inqua fence would have ended on my saw stop and I thought that was too short. I think though, that you're gonna like what Larry Galt did to his fence. Thanks for the video. I did it to mine, except I had already put a three quarter inch face on my fence. So I didn't have to go over as far as you did. I don't like the option of using the kit since I would still need to remove the guides on some cuts because they were in the way. I'm happy now, thank you. Following are some photos of Larry's fence with the Jessam guide. The three quarter inch plywood gives Larry the needed setback for taller wood and the arms are clear from the face of the fence. KB Kuhlman says, wow, this is perfect. I have the exact same setup, same saw, fence, and guides, but I never could get that three quarter inch setback, so I've just lived with it. Whenever I need them out of the way, I've just been slipping them out of the track. Not ideal, but at least I don't have to remove them very often. I'm going to implement this solution next time I'm out in the shop. FPR writes, thank you, sir. Great job, this information is exactly what I needed. I seriously appreciate the level of detail you cover. Keep the videos coming. Well guys, I hope it works out well for both of you. I'll try to keep the videos coming, especially now that I'm back in the shop. From Barry, very nice video, Don. Very good camera angles and informative. I like your videos. Doesn't have any annoying music. I have the same Incra fence. Why doesn't Incra just make the fence taller to eliminate this problem? My friend has these on his Incra fence and it added a lot of weight to the fence, which made it harder to slide. I do have to say, Incra makes the best fence system on the market. Well, Barry, I haven't found any issues of the extra weight on the Incra fence, but I can see that it would be a problem for some people. As for Incra making a taller fence, I don't think they see this as a problem and changing the fence height would have caused a lot of problems for them in making different extrusions. For tall boards, there is a system here that comes with the Wonder Fence that makes this fence about this tall. 
Um, I'll cover that in another video once I do a video on the Inquifence system. But that's something that is available, if you, especially if you want to run boards on edge across the table saw. There is a higher fence that's available for the Inqua. From Wally. Hi Don, first let me say that you crafted a superior video. I enjoyed the split screens and crystal clear close-ups and captioning. You obviously spent a lot of time in post-production or you have a very savvy spouse or grandchild. Thank you Wally for the compliments. Whenever possible, I try to make my videos as understandable as possible. And yes, that includes the close-up shots whenever I can get them. You have to remember, though, that I getting some of those angles sometimes is difficult to do. Just the setups of the video to try to get those angles and close-ups you like takes a lot of time and a lot of thinking as to where I can put the camera and what it's going to show me. Now, as for help, I do all the planning, designing, shop work, video setups, video editing, as well as the post-production of all the videos. Um, that might explain why I don't get a whole lot done around here. More from Wally. I don't have an Incra fence, so I have to ask a dumb question. Why don't you just grind down the zinc positioner bracket to the level of the fence top? Is there a purpose for the bump that started this whole adventure? First of all, there's no dumb questions, just questions that haven't been asked. Grinding down the bump is not possible. As shown in the following photo, the upper part of the bracket is where the positioner attaches to it, so it does have a purpose. Here's the top of the fence, and these are the attachment screws for the positioner. The top of the bracket is flush with the top of the positioner. Wally continues. Finally, we seem to have many similar accessories, but tell me about the white marking pin. That I have never seen before. I feel an instant desire to get one after watching your video. Thanks again for your production. Thanks again for your compliments. Now the white pencil I can help with. I have a video for that. This is the thumbnail for my video, Marking Dark Woods with a White Pencil. This is an update of a previous video showing better pencils. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below. Now I really confuse Raphael. He says, Hi, I have exactly the same setup and I love your idea. I noticed when you put your angle guide, you said that the instructions recommended 30 degrees, but you set it up over 50 degrees. Just wonder. Thanks. Raphael, here's the still from the video. Unfortunately, it's difficult to read the angle gauge. I took this photo to show it better. As I magnify the gauge, you can actually see that the angle is 60 degrees, which is 30 degrees from the 90 degrees, which is the angle of the saw's top. I hope that clarifies the angle. This comes from the shack. Well, this definitely gives me something to think about. I ordered my Inquifence system in November 2021, and it's not due to ship until June of 2022. Unfortunately, I have a little bit of a wait. Am I the only one here to find this kind of ironic when he stated he didn't have enough money until they had a sale on these, yet he's stalling it on an Inquifence system? Not cheap. Not to mention it's on a saw stop. Then he uses a Festool sander but yet he had to wait on a sale for a $150 set of guides. I'm always interested in saving money, so I'm going to keep an eye out for a set of these on sale. Okay, the shack, I got a big kick out of this one. I run my shop on a very tight budget. In fact, a lot of the money that I get to buy tools and supplies for the shop come from recycling cans and bottles and birthday and Christmas gifts. That means whenever possible, I do buy things on sale to save some of that money. So when the Jessam guys went on sale, I thought it was a no-brainer. Yes, I know I do have a saw stop. I bought one because my wife told me to, and she even found the money to pay for it. As for the Festool sanders, I had a Bosch sander. The switch went out twice. In fact, it was notorious for that. The guy that fixed it had a whole box full of switches, and he told me he was constantly changing those out for people. So I decided to buy the best, and I bought two Festool sanders, one you haven't seen on camera, and a CT vac. I simply just got tired of buying cheap tools and having them break on me. BOBBG says, duh, just cut a notch in the stock guide rail and skip the other steps.
Wurxland Theory added, Thanks for sharing to help others and the effort you put into the production of this video. I do have a question. Couldn't you just cut the jessam rail that goes on top in half and spread them apart to clear that rail mount? I feel that doesn't affect the effectiveness at all, but I don't have a set. I wish I did, but a bit pricey. While both of those ideas may sound possible, the center section of the jessam track is sometimes used, especially for shorter boards. So that's not an option to either cut it in half or make a notch on both sides of this positioner. This comment comes from David Stanton in Australia, who's an excellent, experienced woodworker. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, I suggest that you do. Let me say you go into a lot of detail, Don. The only issue I see is the inqua fence lifted in your demonstration. Maybe an L bracket fitted to a mag switch or two on the back of the fence. So Dave, I do greatly appreciate that comment and noticing what was going on with the inqua fence. I haven't noticed it in any of the production work that I've done, but I do keep an eye on it. So thanks again. Let's look at so that section of video. Again. And you can see how that popped up. This will not come backwards. I stopped the video here so you can see the gap between the outfeed table and the fence. As I switch out the photo, you can see what the gap was like just before I made that last push. The gap obviously got bigger, but not by very much. As the video starts up, you'll see the gap widen again. It will not come back at me. In order to get it loose, I have to push it all the way through. I found another video segment to show better what's happening. Notice as the board goes under the second guide, the gap does not widen. But the gap does widen when I pull back on the board to show how the guides are holding the board. As I push the board forward, notice the fence goes back down. So when you're ripping a board, this shouldn't be a problem to be concerned about. So let's look at that clip in an instant replay in slow motion. Notice that the fence stays down as the wood goes under that second guide. Now I'm going to pull back on the piece of wood to show how it gets caught with those guides. And when I do, the fence goes up. But even though the fence went up a little bit, you can still see the guide is holding the wood firm. Now as I start pushing the wood forward again, the fence drops back down. It's easy to see through this clip how strongly those guides hold the wood and keep it from kicking back. Here are a couple of views from a different cut. I marked the top of the fence so you can easily see if it moves up as I make this cut. I didn't pull back on the board on this cut, so it shows you what a normal cut looks like. Yes, I still need to find a better push stick to use with these guides. As I was using this push stick to push the wood past the guides, I suddenly remembered, oh yeah, I was going to make a push stick. And suddenly all of these ideas popped up in my mind of things that I had seen. Now I just need to pick one and make it. Of course, it would have been a lot safer if I turned off the table saw before I thought of all those. Well, Wally, this is my setup for editing videos. I have the Apple Mac Studio Max in the center along with an Apple Studio display for my main editing monitor. I bought these right after they were introduced about a year ago. The secondary monitor over there is a Samsung TV that I bought about 15 years ago for the house, but it's now an extra TV. And over here on my left, I still have the 2014 27 inch iMac that is sort of a backup or an extra computer. Now to the shack, you can see that in addition to the cost for the things in the shop, I also need to spend a lot on production equipment to produce the YouTube videos. With the money I've laid out on just what you see here, I could have bought my dream bandsaw for resawing. That's why I have to save money wherever I can. The shack, I hope you finally got your Inqua fence and let me know in the comments below if you did. By the way, right after I published this video, Woodcraft had another sale on those Jessam guides. I'm enjoying this 
video setup. Now, if you really like what you're seeing here and want to know more about it, I do have a channel on YouTube called The Tech Ihound that you can watch and it'll tell you more about Apple technology and the technology that I'm using that's connected with Apple. I even will have a review on this microphone that I'm using. For those of you who are more interested in technology, check out that second channel, The Tech iHound. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up down below. There's a suggested video over here, and over here, if you click on my logo, you subscribe to the channel. You may be wondering why this office space is a little strange. It's actually an extension of our dining room, which is over there. It's the only spot in the house that I have where my office can go right now. 